What's up, Variant Nation? Darkseid is easily one of the biggest and most terrifying bads in the DC Universe, which is why he's known as one of the Justice League's most challenging villains. And when I say Justice League, I mean he's obviously powerful enough to fight the entire Justice League all at once. In fact, Darkseid has brought the world to the brink of destruction more times than I can count. But as the great Qui-Gon would say, There's always a bigger fish. So for all of Darkseid's immense power and feats, there are a number of other villains that can knock Homeboy out for the count. And today, we're going to talk about about 10 of them. As you can imagine, anyone who is able to take out Darkseid has unimaginable power, so obviously we chose villains who have more than demonstrated they have the feats, power, and ability to take out DC's most infamous new god. And believe me when I tell you, you're about to see exactly what we mean. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have Erebos, who was introduced in the Deceased series. Erebos is a primordial deity, one of the first beings born in the Void of Chaos. Because of this, he's more of a concept or force of nature than anything else, possessing darkness, manipulation, and divine empowerment. In fact, Erebos is the personification of darkness in Greek mythology, the god of the dark, so to speak. Well, in the deceased story, Erebos was unleashed when Darkseid, who was always chasing after and messing with the anti-life equation, finally got his hands on it, but not before he fused it with elements of death itself, creating a corrupted version of the anti-life equation and the perfect gateway for Erebos to inflict chaos on their world and turn anyone infected with it into a violent agent of death. And not surprisingly, that included Darkseid. Erebos is so powerful powerful that Ares, the god of war, said this about him in Deceased War of the Undead Gods Issue 3. You are not fighting an equation. Darkseid, he's a new god. He's a child, a powerful pawn for something much larger. He had no idea what he was playing with when he merged the anti-life with death. What he has unleashed, what has turned its gaze towards us, that is no equation. This is older than numbers, older than gods. This universe will die. Erebos is here. So even the god of war is terrified of what Darkseid has unleashed into the universe because essentially, you can't kill Darkseid. Darkness. In fact, at one point, we actually see Erebos say, Ares and the Black Racer, such little things. When there is no one left to fight a war, when there is nothing left living to die, there will still be darkness. And right after he says that, he easily kills Ares, popping him like a balloon with one of his massive Cthulhu-like tentacles. Ultimately, Erebos was such a threat to the universe that Darkseid was willing to join forces with the Justice League in order to fight him. But in the end, the only way Erebos was stopped was with a life equation imbued Damian Wayne Batman detonating himself with an intense amount of light from inside of Erebos, because the only thing that can beat the dark is the light. As for Darkseid, this story made it abundantly clear that he is no match for Erebos, and a child by comparison. Next, we have the new god Yuga Khan, the father of Darkseid. A lot of children are scared of their father's wrath, and Darkseid is no exception. He is terrified of his father because his dad would lay the smack down on him, and he's arguably the most powerful and feared new god. You see, like Darkseid, Yuga Khan always desires more knowledge and power. This same drive is what leads Darkseid on his constant quest to obtain the anti-life equation. But for Khan, it led him to want to know more about the source, more specifically the source of everything in the DC Universe. This curiosity led Yuga Khan to attempt to break open the source, hoping to gain its secrets and its knowledge, but it didn't go well and he became trapped in the source wall. He eventually freed himself, which is an incredible example of how powerful he is all by itself. And once he was loose, he headed straight for his son on Apocalypse. And when Darkseid saw his dad breaking through the walls, he goes full panic mode. He even tells Desaad, it's him. He's here. I order you to destroy him. Do you hear me? That's what I have you here for, Desaad. What are you waiting for? Are you actually enjoying my fear? Do you dare savor my terror? But Khan eventually gets to Darkseid anyway and easily subdues him. Khan then asks, what's the matter, Darkseid? You don't have a big kiss and hug for your father? And after this humiliating moment for Darkseid, Khan once again takes the throne in the very next issue. So that right there is all the evidence you need. Darkseid was literally panicking when he learned his father was free and coming for his throne again. He basically admitted he was scared, asking Desaad if he enjoyed seeing his fear. And that fear was justified because Big Poppy made easy work of him. Next up, we have Imperiex. This is another explanation we can sum up pretty simply. Imperiex has the power of the Big Bang within him, and he uses said power to destroy and recreate the universe. This makes Imperiex a universal threat right out the gate, which is why he has the nickname Destroyer of Galaxies. He's essentially DC's answer to Galactus. A great example of his power is found in Superman 153. In the issue, Mongol goes to Metropolis to warn him that Imperiex is going to destroy the universe they all reside in. So Superman bites, and when they go to confront Imperiex, he makes easy work of Superman and Mongol, saying this galaxy has been targeted for demolition. I mean, think about that. Imperiex is a guy who was able to smack Superman and Mongol 
around at the same exact time. Then in the Our Worlds at War crossover story, Imperiax was shown to be such a big threat, all of Earth's heroes and villains, including Darkseid, had to team up to defeat a common enemy. Essentially, what it all comes down to is, Imperiax has the power to unmake and remake universes as the embodiment of entropy. So if he wished, he could target Apocalypse for destruction and destroy Darkseid and his entire planet with ease. Okay, let's pause right here before we go to the next villain, because the obvious question is, coffee is great. Yes, I know that's not a question, but that's not the point. The point is, did you know that you can get comics on coffee? Well, you can, and this awesome company sent us some of their glorious brews to try, and I may have had a few taste tests. Okay, a lot of few. But I blame it on Superman's Metropolis Mocha, because I honestly couldn't believe how good it was. And I had to see if all the roasts were just as good. Spoiler alert, yes they are. Comics on Coffee is a geek-tastic coffee roasting company and the brainchild of an awesome husband and wife team, Tony and Tanya, who took their love of comics and coffee and decided to combine the two. He roasts the coffee, and she does the design work. They also get all their coffee beans directly from the farmers, then they use all natural oils to flavor the beans during the roasting process. Which explains why this coffee is so, so good. With their DC license, they've created coffee roasts like the Dark Knight Roast, Joker's Blueberry Blast, Green Lantern Irish Cream, Blue Beetle Horchata, and a bunch more. So you could go straight heroes, bundle up some villains, or get them all together and just battle them out in your coffee mug. I think that's what I did. I'll also add that they have a Lord of the Rings Baggins blend that I haven't tried yet, but you better believe that's next on my list. Anyway, the main point is you guys gotta try this coffee. So level up your morning coffee by going to comicsoncoffee.com and use promo code variant15 to get 15% off your entire order. Then come back and let us know which blend is your favorite. Now on to pick seven. Now jumping to the next villain who could defeat Darkseid, we have Superboy Prime. Superboy Prime is just an alternate version of Superman turned evil, and we've all seen Superman defeat Darkseid on more than one occasion, so what do you think a version of Superman that has no moral restraints could do to Darkseid? Superboy Prime is the guy who punched the barriers between a universal nexus and the real world so hard, it changed reality. For example, you know, he brought Jason Todd back from the dead. Just small stuff like that. He's also the same guy who in Dark Knight's Death Metal The Secret Origin number 1 punches the Dark Knight so hard it causes the 52 evil alternate Earths he created to vanish. What can I say? He's got a strong punching thing going. Anyway, he did die right after that, but the whole point is Superboy Prime has reality altering power. Not to mention, he traded several blows with the Darkest Knight, who is one of the most powerful beings in DC history, possessing nigh omnipotence. In short, Superboy Prime can definitely take down Darkseid with his sheer power and willingness to do whatever it takes to get it done. Next up, we have the previously mentioned Darkest Knight, which is the final form of the Batman Who Laughs. And the reason we think he could easily defeat Darkseid is because when the Batman Who Laughs got the powers of Dr. Manhattan by having his brain transplanted into the corpse of Bruce Wayne, he became an evil amalgamation of Batman and Dr. Manhattan, along with reality-altering powers. And this is where he took the name The Darkest Knight. At this point, he became one of the most powerful beings the DC Universe has ever seen. So powerful, he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mother of the multiverse, Perpetua, in Dark Knight's metal Rise of the New God. The two were literally throwing worlds at each other like they were playing dodgeball. To reiterate, The Darkest Knight has near-unlimited power. There's almost nothing he can't do. That makes Darkseid something like a gnat to The Darkest Knight. Another dude who can slap Darkseid around like the rock slapping Cody is Necron. Necron is the embodiment of death and darkness and has the ability to take and restore life as he wishes. Necron was the leader and creator of the Black Lantern Corps, becoming the main antagonist in the Blackest Night story. And this guy is no joke. The entirety of the DC Universe faced his wrath in the Blackest Night and barely came out on top. He has reality manipulation on a planetary scale, dimensional manipulation, matter manipulation, energy manipulation, soul manipulation, and life and death manipulation. As an example, all he would need to do is something similar to what he did in The Blackest Night. Use his power of necromancy to reanimate the dead from across the universe, and he would overwhelm Apocalypse and Darkseid with ease. Plus, Necron is one of the few manifestations of death in the DC Universe, and because of this, he cannot be killed by any normal means. So it would be near impossible for Darkseid to take out Necron. Darkseid actually wishes he had the power of Necron, which is why he's always hunting the anti-life equation. He would love to be the embodiment of death and darkness, but he's not, and the guy who is could rip him apart. Now this next character wouldn't be able to beat Darkseid as easily as Necron or the Darkest Knight, but he could definitely beat Darkseid into submission with brute force, and that is Doomsday. Doomsday's powers stem from a process of forced evolution by being killed repeatedly in the harshest environments and then revived, each time becoming resistant or immune to what previously killed him. In short, he's immortal and can't be killed the same way twice. The greatest example of Doomsday's power is obvious, and it's one of the most iconic moments in comic history, when he killed Superman in Superman 75. They actually killed each other, but the point is, Doomsday 
Doomsday was able to do what no other villain has, kill the Man of Steel. And as I said earlier, Superman has defeated Darkseid on more than one occasion, so it's safe to assume that Doomsday could definitely defeat Darkseid. It does have to be stated though, Darkseid could also beat Doomsday. The problem for Darkseid is that Doomsday always comes back. So if Darkseid were to kill Doomsday using a particular method or power, Doomsday would simply return, immune to that method of attack, and take him out. It's for this reason and more that Darkseid ran from him in Doomsday Annual Number 1. Enough said. Coming in at number three is a character that would literally just blink Darkseid out of existence or into another one. And that is Mixyeth Spitlick. Simply put, Mr. Mixyeth Spitlick is a fifth dimensional imp with the power to do anything that he can think of. He can easily defeat Superman or any other character if he wants to, but there's no fun in that form. He's more interested in playing games with people. But it's just one example of his sheer power. When Mixyeth Spitlick was fighting with Batmite, another fifth dimensional imp, he accidentally destroyed the whole universe. He wasn't trying or putting effort into it. He just slipped on a banana peel and accidentally destroyed a whole universe. And before that little oops, he and Batmite were throwing planets and galaxies at one another. Again, Mixia Spitlick could just think Darkseid out of existence or think of something more clever like creating and putting him in a reality where Darkseid's dad, Yuga Khan, constantly has him over his knee. In fact, that actually seems like something he'd be more likely to do. But as a direct example of Darkseid up against this fifth dimensional imp's power, in Superman Volume 2, Issue 161 through 165, the Emperor Joker storyline, we see the Joker wielding Mixia Mixyeth Spitlick's powers, reshaping reality itself to his whims. In Emperor Joker number one, he actually faces off against Darkseid and defeats him easily with only 99.99% of Mixyeth Spitlick's powers. So yes, Darkseid does not have a snowball's chance in hell. Here we have yet another character that would destroy Darkseid, and that is the mother of the multiverse and sixth dimensional being, Perpetua. And yes, she actually created the DC multiverse. She's also the mother to god-tier beings such as the Anti-Monitor, the Monitor, and the World Force. She is one of the hands of the greater omniverse. The hands are cosmic beings created by the source and charged with populating the greater omniverse with infinite multiverses. And Perpetua is the most feared out of all of her brothers and sisters. She's yet another being who can do whatever she wants with a single thought. She can create life and erase life. As the mother of the multiverse, she can do with it as she pleases and exists outside of it, not within it. Justice League 22 actually takes us back 20 billion years ago where we get a glimpse of her creating the DC multiverse. We even see her holding it in her her hands like a basketball, saying to her children, soon these realms will be populated with universes, a vibrant life. Which in the end makes Darkseid but a single molecule to her by comparison. Simply put, she created Darkseid and everything else in the multiverse. So in reality, it's kind of an insult to even compare her to Darkseid. Coming in at number one and the last being we're going to mention that can beat Darkseid is the Anti-Monitor. Now, as I just said, the Anti-Monitor is the son of Perpetua. And because of this, the Anti-Monitor is one of the first children of the realm. Perpetua tasked the Anti-Monitor with guarding the boundaries of creation, keeping them free of life. He's essentially another being that represents death for the multiverse. But for our purposes, we saw a battle in the Dark Side War story, which has Dark Side fighting the Anti-Monitor. And in issue 44 of the Justice League title from the New 52 run, we saw exactly who would win, and of course, it was the Anti-Monitor. Dark Side and the Anti-Monitor go to battle in the issue in glorious fashion, but ultimately Dark Side is no match for the Anti-Monitor, especially since he currently has the Anti-Life Equation coursing through his veins. So with with the control of death, the Anti-Monitor sends the Black Racer straight through Darkseid's chest with an explosive blast, killing him, as we see Darkseid dead and bleeding out on the last page of the issue. Then in issue 45 of the series, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman all acknowledge Darkseid is dead. So it's not really a matter of if Anti-Monitor can beat Darkseid, because he already has. But again, even without that proof, it's kind of obvious given his power set, which includes the ability to absorb universes and manipulate antimatter. The Anti-Monitor is a cosmic level threat that could annihilate entire reality. So yeah, Darkseid loses. But that, my friends, wraps up our list of the 10 DC villains that could take out Darkseid. A few additional honorable mentions would be the Zone Child, who lives within the Phantom Zone but has control over DC reality, Starro, who is a planet-conquering warlord that enslaved galaxies via his link with the Star Conquerors, and Batmite, who just like Mixess Spitlick can do whatever he can imagine as a fifth dimensional imp. Every one of them could put the hurt on Darkseid. But here's the question, which villains do you think would give Darkseid a bad day? Let us know down in the comments. And while we're talking Darkseid, many of you may be wanting a bit more detail on the man himself. So how about some bonus content with our history of Darkseid? Check it out. 
Darkseid first appeared as a cameo in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen issue 134 in November of 1970, before making his first full appearance in Forever People issue 1 in February of 1971. He was created by none other than the great Jack Kirby. It all started when Kirby went to DC Comics to work on Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen with issue 133. As soon as he was put on the book, he started laying down the groundwork for his creation and idea, The Fourth World, which in layman's terms is his universe of eternal conflict between good and evil, aka New Genesis vs. Apocalypse. Then literally on his second issue of Superman's Pal, he put a cameo of Darkseid. Darkseid was originally intended to be the main villain for the Forever People, New Gods, and Mr. Miracle titles, which to be fair, he was, but Darkseid grew to become even more than that. You see, after the cancellation of those titles, DC was like, yeah, we still want to see Darkseid, so he would continue to make appearances as a villain in some major DC titles, ultimately fighting characters like Superman and Batman, and then even the entire Justice League. As for how Jack Kirby came up with Darkseid, well, as legend has it, he modeled Darkseid's face off of actor Jack Palance, while the villain's personality was inspired by Adolf Hitler and Richard Nixon. And I gotta say, if you're gonna have a villain inspired by someone, it doesn't get much eviler than Hitler. But now that you know a little bit about Darkseid's real world creation, let's take a look at his fictional one with Origins. Now, Darkseid has had two major origins over the years, his original Jack Kirby one and the one from the 2011 New 52 reboot. And though I'm not sure which origin they're gonna be pulling from most for Zack Snyder's Justice League, I will say that doesn't matter because us true Darkseid and fourth world fans know there's only one real origin for Darkseid and that's the one created and told to us by Jack the King Kirby. So that's the one I'm about to break down. It all starts with the origin of the new gods because as we know, Darkseid is a new god. You see, as Jack Kirby told us himself, many, many years ago, there came a time when the old gods died. The brave died with the cunning. The noble perished, locked in battle with unleashed evil. It was the last day for them. An ancient era was passing and fury holocaust. The final moment came with the fatal release of indescribable power, which tore the home of the old gods asunder, split into two great halves, and filled the universe with the blinding death flash of destruction. In the end, there were two giant molten bodies, spinning slow and barren, clean of all that had gone before. Drift in the feeding sounds of cosmic thunder, silence closed upon what had happened, a long deep silence wrapped in massive darkness. It was this way for an age, then there was new light, and out of this light, the new gods were born. But like any civilization, alien or not, there's good and there's evil. Now, as I just mentioned a moment ago, the home world of the old gods was split into two during its destruction, with each one ultimately becoming its own new planet. One essentially becoming heaven and the other one hell. That's not literal, that's just the best way to look at it. And of course, we're here to elaborate on Darkseid, who rules the evil hell planet named Apocalypse. As the god Orion even said, all that New Genesis stands for is reversed on Apocalypse. But before Darkseid ruled Apocalypse, before he became Darkseid, he was known as Prince Usyx. He was second in line to the throne of Apocalypse, which didn't sit well with him because he wanted to be king. So he devised a plan to take control of Apocalypse, but he didn't have to get rid of his father because his father, King Yuka Khan, was trapped in the source wall after attempting to unlock the secret to the source. However, he did have to get rid of his older brother, Drax, and no, not Drax from Marvel and Guardians of the Galaxy, completely different universe and character. So when Drax went to the Infinity Pit to obtain and master the Omega Effect, Uxus killed him and stole the Omega Effect from his brother, at which point Uxus's skin turned to stone and he renamed himself Darkseid. So if you ever wondered why Darkseid's skin looks like concrete or stone, that's why. His skin turned to stone once he stole the Omega Effect from his brother, at which point he took up the name Darkseid. Now that's how Uxus became Darkseid, but if you could believe it or not, Darkseid actually became a little tamer after this. And what is the only thing that could tame a man? Say it with me. A woman. And that would be Sully, a kind-hearted scientist who used her power for the common good instead of conquering. But Darkseid's mother, Queen Hegra, was all like, nope, this is Apocalypse and you're not gonna corrupt my son with all your good intentions. He's gotta stay evil. So she had to sod Apocalypse Torturer, kill her, but not before she gave birth to Darkseid's son, Killabok. But of course, Darkseid eventually found out his mother had Sully killed, so now more pissed off and motivated than ever to see his mother dead, he also used Asad, this time to kill his own mother by poisoning her. This all led to Darkseid forever turning his back on the concept of love and compassion, leaving him as the unstoppable ruler of Apocalypse. And now that you know Darkseid's origin, let's start talking about some of his story arcs and publication history. Now, when you think dark side story arcs and comics, there's obviously several that come to mind, one of which being the Great Darkness Saga. And the reason for that is it takes place 1,000 years in the future where Darkseid has been gone for centuries. To say he's a distant memory would be an understatement, but just because he's forgotten doesn't mean he's gone and not gonna make a comeback. And that's exactly what he does when he returns 1,000 years into the future and starts fighting with the heroes of this time, aka the Legion of Superheroes. Once back, he uses magic and science, aka alchemy, to make himself even more powerful. He then places the planet Daxum under a yellow sun 
to give all of its Kryptonian inhabitants Superman-like powers. If you didn't know, the planet Daxum is made up of a colony of Kryptonians who left Krypton to explore the universe. Anyway, Darkseid then puts them under mind control and uses them to try to conquer the universe. But of course, in the end, the Legion of Superheroes are like, yeah, that's not gonna happen, and defeated Darkseid. We then have the Darkseid story from the Seven Soldiers Mr. Miracle miniseries from 2005, which gave us Boss Darkseid. Basically what happens here is it's revealed that Darkseid has finally got what he's always wanted, the anti-life equation. And once he gets it, he uses it to destroy all of Fourth World. If you don't know what Fourth World is, it's Jack Kirby's universe where the New Gods live, both New Genesis and Apocalypse. And Darkseid destroyed all of it. Because of this, the New Gods fled to Earth where they would stay in hiding. And this is where things get crazy. We learn that High Father and everyone that follows him are now a group of homeless people. We also learn that both Metron and Black Racer use wheelchairs, Granny Goodness became a woman pimp for the female Furies, Desaad is an evil sadistic psychiatrist, and Darkseid is now a prominent gang leader who they call Boss Darkseid. It's a pretty crazy, but cool story. If you're familiar with Grant Morrison and his writing, you know what I'm talking about. It's weird, but good. Either way, by the end of the story, Darkseid devises a plan to destroy the new gods once and for all. But this brings us to the Big Mama, and probably the most famous Darkseid story of all time, for better or for worse, Final Crisis. And what's crazy about Final Crisis is that the Seven Soldiers Mr. Miracle miniseries and Boss Darkseid ties into it, but that's what we call going down the wormhole. So we're not gonna get into that right now, but just know that Boss Darkseid is a big part of Final Crisis. As for Final Crisis itself, it starts off with Darkseid taking over and messing up the multiverse with the help of his herald, Libras. All you really need to know about Libra is he's an agent of Darkseid who's a supervillain anti-Christ-like figure. But he's not the only person helping out Darkseid, Darkseid has a legion of followers that's helping him as he undergoes his latest rebirth, which leads to Darkseid gaining the fullest of his power. But eventually, Batman is able to shoot Darkseid with the same exact bullet that killed Orion, Darkseid's son, which gives us the ever-famous image of Batman using a gun to shoot Darkseid. But if Batman using a gun isn't crazy enough for you, simultaneously while Batman shoots Darkseid, Darkseid hits Batman through the heart with one of his Omega Beams, sending Batman back in time and infecting him with Omega energy. Now, originally, we didn't know that at first. We thought Darkseid straight up killed Batman, but in actuality, he was lost in space and time via the Omega Sanction. And the Batman body we saw Superman holding was actually one of the many Batman clones Darkseid made. It was a whole thing, because what? Comics. This leads to a confrontation with Superman and Darkseid, and of course Superman is extremely pissed that he just killed his best friend, and you know, is also destroying the universe. But Darkseid just mocks Superman as he failed to defend Earth, and also tells him that he created a doomsday singularity that is going to threaten all of existence. So of course Superman is like, yep, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you now. But when he starts doing so, Darkseid tells him that he doesn't only exist in that body. He now exists in all the bodies who fell to the power of the anti-life equation and that killing him would also be killing all of humanity. Long story short, before Darkseid can kill Superman, Wally West and Barry Allen show up, bringing Black Racer to kill Darkseid, along with Wonder Woman, who then uses her lasso to hold Darkseid's spirit form, which in turn frees humanity from Darkseid's anti-life equation and being controlled by him. Then as a last ditch effort, if you will, Darkseid's disembodied essence appears and tries to take control of the Miracle Machine. If you don't know, the Miracle Machine turns thoughts into reality, but Superman's like, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen and instead uses the solar energy within his cells to power the miracle machine to make a wish, basically putting everything back to normal, or at least make things good again. And we also learned that Batman was able to return safely to the present thanks to Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, Damian Wayne, and the entire Justice League. Meaning he was able to consume Omega energy in his body without damaging the timelines. But what's really crazy about that is, it makes Batman only the second person ever to escape the Omega Sanction. The only other person to ever do that is Mr. Miracle, and that's literally his gimmick. He escapes from things. All of this brings us to the New 52. In the New 52, Darkseid was the reason for the Justice League's formation. Literally, in the first Justice League New 52 story arc, Darkseid invades with his parademons, which forces Green Lantern, Aquaman, Flash, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Cyborg all to meet for the first time and eventually join forces to beat Darkseid, which was written by Jeff Johns and drawn by Jim Lee. I really enjoyed their time on the New 52 Justice League run. It was one of my favorite things to come out of the New 52. Then during DC Rebirth, Darkseid is quite literally a baby at the start of it, which carried over from the New 52 during the Darkseid War storyline. Darkseid progressively ages throughout DC Rebirth, but ultimately decides it's not the best time to fight the Justice League because he doesn't want to risk revealing his greater plans before leaving through a boom tube with his daughter Grail. And this leads us to the most current appearance of Darkseid, which is in the DC Infinite Frontier era. In Infinite Frontier issue zero, the very last page reveals that Darkseid is back and stronger than ever, preparing to cement his reign over the DC multiverse. If you guys want to know the whole story, we did an episode on it, which you can find right here. But just like that, my comic comrades, it's time for powers and abilities. Darkseid is incredibly powerful. He's easily one of the most powerful beings in the DC multiverse. Because of this, he's conquered entire universes. There's a reason all of Apocalypse worships him as the god of evil. 
Darkseid's strength is up there with the likes of Trigon and the Anti-Monitor. With that said, let's start breaking down some of his powers individually, or at least start listing them. He has a new god physiology, meaning he has incredible strength due to their relative proximity to the source which as us DC fans know, is a mysterious energy that fuels everything in DC. It's quite literally the source of all. Because of this, he has superhuman strength and could easily lift 100 tons. He's also held off the entire Justice League by himself. And considering you have two heavy hitters like Superman and Wonder Woman on the team, amongst the fastest man alive and the king of the sea, that's insane. But let's keep going. Darkseid is fueled by the Omega Effect. For those of you who don't know, the Omega Effect is a force of entropy from the destructive side of the source. This gives him his iconic Omega Beams, which are beams he has complete control over that he shoots from his eyes. They essentially act as trackers following its target wherever it moves, and when they hit, they pretty much can destroy anything. But he also has telepathy, mind control, telekinesis, energy manipulation, energy enhanced strikes, energy force fields, he can fly, soul manipulation, Resurrection, because he's immortal. Teleportation, size alteration, astral projection, cosmic sense, power distribution, and of course, the Omega Sanction, which is probably his most powerful ability. Basically what it is, is a living hell. It traps an organism in a series of alternate realities, each worse than the previous. He's also possessed the anti-life equation, which as you would assume, is the opposite of the life equation. Meaning the anti-life equation destroys all life. It's what he used to almost defeat DC's heroes during the final crisis story. Now, if you guys want some Dark Side reading recommendations, check out the Dark Side War storyline. We didn't get into it today, but it's an amazing story. Justice League Volume 1 Origin from the New 52, The Great Darkness Saga, and of course, Final Crisis. Those should be enough to get all of you started. All right, that wraps up our Dark Side episode for today, my friends. But which villains do you think would give Dark Side a bad day? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, we will see you next time when we talk about all things comics.